Overwatch is not a movement shooter. A controversial opinion to some, but just hear me out for a moment, alright? So, my reason for this statement is pretty simple, at least personally that's what I think, and it's just that movement isn't at the core of Overwatch's design, so I don't think it can really count as a movement shooter. It's not TF2, it's not TF2. Now is there movement in this game? Absolutely. No shit, of course there is. Have you seen it? Like, hello? <laughs> What I'm saying is, this game doesn't have movement as one of its primary focuses, or one of its main objectives in any of its gameplay or whatnot. It's not like other multiplayer games like The Finals, which have movement all across the board, or even single player games like Ultra Kill do. But why am I even bringing all this up? It's all just for one simple reason. There are very, very few games that manage to get movement down in such a way that it feels fluid and fun without it being a primary focus. Overwatch. I believe, is one of the exceptions to this. Despite not being a movement shooter whatsoever, this game will always feel so amazing to control. Yeah, you thought this was going to be a negative video about Overwatch, you're absolutely wrong, this is a positive video about it, this is some rare footage right here. So let's start with our core movement, the controls we were all born and raised on, W, A, S, and D. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at some other shooters just to see how is movement done in them and also just to see how is their basic movement work and the like. So I've chosen two games that I think work at least well enough for what I'm going to be doing. Valorant and The Finals like I was talking about earlier. Now I'm after choosing Valorant because it's similar enough to Overwatch in a way that it doesn't have movement at the core of its design and no shit it doesn't, it's a tactical FPS but it does still have at least a fair bit of movement in random places, which I think I can at least get a little bit out of and will use as some solid examples. Now regular movement for this game is basic and it's based off this little thing some of you might know called physics. As you move in one direction, you build up to your max speed in that direction. Then if you hit the opposite direction, you're going to slow down in the previous one before eventually getting to max speed in your new direction. Now we'll talk about this part a little more in just a second, so let's just take a quick look at two of pretty much the main movement queens of Valorant, Neon and Raze. Sorry Jet, but I've taken everything away from you. I play both of these characters, and it's quite simple why. They can move at more than 2 miles an hour. We'll start with Neon, since I can actually play this girl, and she has the rare ability of being able to run. Amazing, I know. But this allows her to go for a lot of plays that no one else can, bunny hopping around and being able to have sudden changes in her movement thanks to her slide. Like I said earlier, characters can't immediately swap directions that they're going in, it's going to take about half a second before they start moving at full speed in the other way, which in Valorant is more than enough time to find a bullet in your head. This slide, which lets you play way more aggressive, could be argued that yeah, it does make the game less tactical, but also I don't want to hear that from Valorant players while your game is slowly turning into Overwatch 1 double shield meta in terms of visibility. So Neon was a good example of why disobeying physics can lead to something feeling more fluid, but what about Raze? Well, she's actually the opposite, at least in the physics department. Raze is a character who uses momentum to her advantage. Satchel jumps, as I'm sure you're all aware of, can send her flying, and I cannot do these well whatsoever, so I'm gonna probably have footage of someone else doing this. But essentially, big boom make you fly far. There's a whole heap of use cases, but with these two characters alone, we can see how things like momentum and the ability to just ignore momentum are important for some fluid movement in a game. Now this video is about Overwatch, I know, and I'll get there in a moment, but first I need to talk about the finals as an example of a game that does have movement at its core. Now the footage for the finals that you're going to see me using is actually all the way back from like October in the early access version of the game, and that's just simply because the, the fucking full final release got rid of all the points I wanted to make, so I'm just going to work, I'm just going to work for the sake of my own arguments here. Now I'm also going to be exclusively talking about the light class, which is just the most fun and also the one that actually, you know, moves. Well, we've got an assortment of bits and pieces, we've got some dashes, we've got some invisibility, though that doesn't really count as movement for this video, and finally, the most fun option, the grappling hook. As for our actual movement pieces that everyone has, well, you know, we've got a little bit of wall climbing, we've got a little bit of sliding, all the typical pieces that you'd see in a game like this that has its own focus on movement, but not entirely dedicating everything to us. For the basic movement, you pick up max speed a fair bit quicker than you do in Valorant. It's nearly like less than 0.1 seconds or something I'd say. Not exactly like I'm going around timing it though, and I don't really care enough to time it. Which is probably not a good thing to be putting in this video, but Asher, look. 
what you're left with, or really what we were left with at the time, was a really fluid game that had you running around everywhere using whatever you had in your kit so you could get to the right place with your payload and all the like. We don't talk about the final release of the game though. And along with that, thanks to the destructible nature of its map, you were able to go around forging your own paths, which was just really fun and way better than what we ended up getting, honestly. Speed is much more central to the finals compared to Valorant, but where does Overwatch come into all of this? So we're after having a bit of a drawn out introduction, and I'm sorry for that, but we're back to our main topic. So let's start with our basic movement in Overwatch. There is no building up to max speed. Every character is at max speed at all times, whether you're going from standing still to moving or swapping directions, there's no downtime, start time, run time, whatever you want to call it, it's just gone. And this little piece is arguably the biggest piece in Overwatch's movement system that makes it feel so fluid. Like, fuck physics, am I right? And speaking of physics, another aspect of the basic control system that I haven't mentioned in other games being mid-air movement. So in Overwatch, you've got some pretty good in-air mobility, no matter the character. You're able to swap directions fairly well, and control how you move in the air pretty good as well. You'll still be an easy target to track if you jump too much, but you get what I mean. In both our examples, but Valorant more so, you just straight up don't control yourself in the air. Now it makes sense as to why, but it comes back to the same thing, fluidity. Obviously the goal in Valorant isn't for people to be defying physics too much, so naturally it doesn't include this in its system, but I nearly say it could be argued that Overwatch does feel amazing to control thanks to having this solid and smooth basic movement foundation. Now I know I did just say that Overwatch isn't a movement shooter at the beginning of the video, however I can't deny that this thing has plenty of movement characters. I mean, I main like half of them. Lucio, Doom, Genji, Ball, Tracer, I'd argue Farah personally, but I feel like some people will call bias on that one, nah, sure look. From the bit of venture gameplay we've seen, I'm hoping that they'll be fun to control, but it's hard to tell just from the little bit we've seen, especially with their playtesters, which I've already talked about them once, so we're not going to go into that. I'm not going to go be going into detail as well on why all these characters I've lifted have good movement, because if you're watching this, you already know why, and we'd be here all day. The reason I brought them up was just so I could go back to my initial point. Overwatch, like I said, is not a movement shooter at its core design. Even though we have stuff like Tank Doomfist, which I already think is a crime against humanity, even though Blizzard keeps removing like a new movement tech that he has every patch, I hate that guy, but let's not get into that at the moment, it's got an absolutely solid foundation for its movement, which does allow the characters who are relying on movement to shine, but it still lets the characters who don't even have that much movement in their kits have fun because they're not going around moving at two miles an hour. It doesn't matter whether you're grinding it out on Lucio, flying across the map on Doomfist, or just dying on Genji, let's be real, it's season 9. Either way, you're always going to be going around, no matter what character you're on, controlling this game so, so well. I hoped you liked this video, I honestly did not have much of a direction for it at all. The idea kind of just popped into my head and I thought, ah, I can get a solid video out of this maybe. So that's why it was just kind of all over the place, honestly. But it was still fun to make, so sure, we'll grind. Either way, if you've got a topic that you want me to talk about, unless your name is Dank, Banana, or Muzz, please leave it in the comments, let me know, and I'll see what I can make out of it. But for now, if you're still here, drop a like, comment, sub, blah blah blah, all that YouTube stuff, and I'll talk to you next time, lads.